New Jersey's only women's prison is back in the headlines again after a correctional police officer was arrested this week and charged with second degree sexual assault. It's sickening. Details described in the complaint warrant appear like the officer allegedly raped an inmate last month on September 16th. What allowed this to slip by? when so many people have been looking so closely. In April of 2018, the Department of Justice launched an investigation into the prison after a news story revealed allegations of inmate abuse dating back to 2008. Two years later, DOJ concluded there is reasonable cause to believe that Edna Mahan violated the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution by failing to protect prisoners from sexual abuse by staff. Then in January, scandal erupted when reports were published of violent cell extractions in the prison. In May, an assistant commissioner of women's services, described as a corrections expert and sexual assault advocate, was appointed as a contact for the inmates to address concerns. The following month, Governor Phil Murphy announced his intention to shut down the prison after the independent report he had commissioned was released. He explained shuttering the prison could take years and in the interim, reforms need to happen immediately. Some of those reforms already implemented include hiring a criminal justice consulting firm and introducing body-worn cameras. Department of Corrections Commissioner Marcus Hicks announced his resignation 24 hours after the report was published, following calls for him to step down. Then in August, a 36-page consent decree laid out all the changes the federal government requires of Edna Mahan. The requirements include appointing an independent monitor to make sure the state complies. That brings us to September 16, when the latest alleged incident occurs. With all the training, with all the security measures that have been instituted since January and all the action, I know that the Moss Group has been on campus, the commissioner has been on campus, the commissioner of women has been on campus multiple times. They, they were stunned. I was stunned. So how does this happen? That's a very good question. The one upbeat thing that I heard was that the... Uh, perpetrating officer was reported on by another officer who saw him. I thank God every day that I meet at home and I'm here at home with my kids and I'm safe, but still mentally I'm not. Former inmate Tony Bolton says the things she's seen and endured inside Enda Mahan is why she continues to speak up and fight for the women inside. Like enough is enough. The acting commissioner of New Jersey Department of Corrections told us in a statement this behavior is unconscionable and shall not be tolerated within the department. Those that violate the law and harm people entrusted to state custody for their care must always be brought to justice. The department is a workplace for those who support the mission of operating safe and humane facilities. Governor Phil Murphy also addressed the new allegations. This can't be kicked down the road for two or three decades. You know, the, what, the disgusting incident in January wasn't the first. This is not tragically the first. We're closing this thing. Uh, and we're in active discussions with, uh, with the corrections, acting corrections commissioner ex on exactly how quickly uh, we could get there. We asked the Department of Corrections where the alleged sexual assault took place. Those details are not clear just yet. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Leah Mishkin.